rid of uh, that. How's it going, guys? Let me just uh, situate it here. All right, so I'm playing some of this somewhat underappreciated or uh, I don't know, I guess this game kind of has a negative reputation due to uh, due to the fact that uh, I don't know, the frame rate frame, blah, the frame rate is kind of low and well, it's a lot low. <laughs> it's like 20 frames per second and then uh, it's also got some difficult controls so. We'll see how I'm able to do. And yes, uh, Robin, the the music is awesome on this thing. Anyway, um, sorry, I had an incoming message, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to start out on the arcade side and just see what we can do with a uh, good old, good old manual control settings. And I'm going to go into options here. Difficulties normal, laps too. That's pretty standard for the DTM races. Oh, I should probably check the controls real quick. Make sure that I'm got it set up. So accelerate, brake, yeah, shift down, shift up. Good deal. Okay, cool. Okay, let's see here. Uh, hold on a second. Let's see here. Gear is muted. Okay. All right. So I might have somebody joining me in the chat. I'm not sure, but we'll see. All right. Anyway, let's see here. Oh, I think that's Dave. Good. Hey, Peter. How's it going? Excellent. Looking forward to seeing some Sega Touring Car. Ooh, I got to turn you down a little bit. try that is that any better yeah a little bit you're kind of redlining you might turn down a little bit on your side yeah it's cool though yeah um since you're here with me peter i wanted to show uh folks before i get into it here i'm on the arcade side of things and there's this little um did you see that post that i put in discord earlier about the cri uh it was like channel web or something Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you when you go to the records, um, if you have if you've completed like a two lap course on the arcade side and you have a Netlink modem inserted, um, you can press the Y button and you can submit data or you can check ranking and it'll actually load up this um it'll load up this piece of software by CRI called Channel Web and I guess the idea is you can check ranking or submit scores to like online leaderboards and of course i'm getting a dns error here but i just wanted to show folks that um it's something cool that is not on the box like i've got a long box copy of touring car here and it doesn't say netlink compatible like on the box or like advertise it but um they gave folks an opportunity to send in their scores over netlink in it and send like emails and stuff like that you could send emails through this thing um in addition to you could go onto the website um you could go onto like a special website and enter like a password that would upload your leaderboard score there too so i thought that was cool if you're a nerd and you like nerdy stuff 
<laughs> it just goes to show how far ahead of the curve Sega was. I mean, could you just imagine? I mean, it was 1997, and yet they had this functionality. I think it's awesome. Yeah, it is. I, I just, Sega was just so way ahead of the curve. They were too ahead of the curve all the time. <laughs> like, literally, yeah. they were just... They were just too early for everything because um, folks just weren't ready for most of this stuff. Not ready to like embrace it. I even remember, I even remember um, Sony with the PS2 having to go to college campuses and really evangelize the whole broadband thing and like online gaming because people were just kind of resistant to it at first. The whole, you know, online gaming on a console you know they had to go into the dorm they had to like bring ps2s into our dorms and stuff like that and like evangelize the whole idea of playing ps2 online you know it was crazy i just remember that okay so how are you doing peter i am doing fantastic i uh just came back from the post office i mailed a couple of things out for people for christmas and i figured I realize it's early November, but uh, best get that out of the way. So that's good. Got uh, plenty of snow to remind me that uh, Christmas is on its way. So <laughs> it was a uh, it was a fun thing to take care of. Other than that, I was actually out today hunting around, uh, seeing if I could find a proper uh, adapter, power adapter for the Resatter and PSU that uh, I had come in the mail just a little while ago, and I wasn't able to find one, so I'll just get one on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and so, you know, I've kind of, like, I've got multiple Saturns, but one of them has a busted power supply unit, so I ended up picking up that Resatter, and now it's just a matter of uh, buying the correct power supply for it, and then I'll be good to go. Cool. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> I got to start over on that. I got to start over on that. I, uh, I, uh, to answer Philippe's question, I'm actually using the 3D control pad, not the wheel. And, uh, I didn't have it switched over to analog. I had it on digital. So when I started trying to record, uh, control, it was a complete mess. <laughs> so let's try that again. <laughs> Uh, but that's awesome, Peter, about your, uh, about the, uh, that tiny little, uh, power supply that you got. I'm really interested in that. Yeah, it's super small. And I mean, um, you know, I read the, uh, instructions, you're, you know, you have to first determine what ori original, um, power supply your Saturn had and what board revision you have and so on and so forth, just so that you can set a couple jumpers correctly. And so I did all of that and. So literally, it's just a matter of me ordering the correct uh, power cable. But we're talking, you know, ten, fifteen dollars on Amazon at right. the most, and you know, then I'll be good to go. And uh, <clears throat> um, like I've got a couple of uh, LAN cables, and so what I'm hoping to do once uh, you know it's a little bit safer for people to meet up for gaming events is to set up a couple of uh, you know like four tv screens four saturns and link two like like two pairs of saturns out for some head-to-head -head gaming some local right. gaming so okay um you know that'll be fun yeah that will be and um i want to know how you like it because uh my daily driver saturn has like um the plug on the back is a little anytime i unplug it or replug it one of the screws is loose I think it mm -hmm. I think it might be broken a little bit, you know, like the the plastic gets brittle. Yes. So I've yes. been looking into the possibility of having to uh, swap that out. I'm and for everybody watching and wondering what the hell I'm doing, um, I was having problems with uh, the 3D analog controller. You may not know that if you try to switch it in the middle like I did, then it just stops responding, and you have to unplug the controller and plug it back in. So. We're getting off to a great start, <laughs> but uh, um, Roberto's in the chat and he said, go for it. Let's see what you've got. You're the only person on earth who loves this game almost as much as me. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty crazy about this game for crazy reasons. I, you know, I probably shouldn't be, but let's try this again. I do have, um, I have a pre-production silver of this game that was gifted to me by K, K Kona, Murder of Crows. Mm. So thank you, Kay, for that. It's one of my, uh, it, you know, the value of it is not great, but it's valuable to me, you know. 
Yeah, silvers are really fun to own. You know, it's funny, they come out for sale online from time to time, various games, and people either know what they are and they end up selling for quite a bit, or people have no idea what they are and they just sit there because people might think it's just a, you know, just a fake game or a reproduction of some kind or whatever. But, uh, you know, they're more than anything, they're, you know, they're conversation pieces, they're, um, they're discs that you want to hang on to because you know right. there's some history there there's some sentiment value. yeah for sure so um i'll let folks know straight off the bat as much as i like this game i'm not saying that i'm like excellent at it or anything like that um and right now i'm actually playing the arcade side which i don't normally play i normally play the saturn side i normally play this game with uh automatic transmission i am trying the arcade side right now um, with the manual transmission um, and the 3D control pad, and we'll see. Um, it's not going to be stellar, but it is playable. And it's going to be harder for me to do while commenting, so I'm not going to, you know, be making any kind of great times or anything like that. But I'm not going to be pinballing all over the course either. So sorry, Peter, I have to uh, kind of go in and out of, like answering comments and stuff like that so I, I placed last no no doubt yeah um normally what i do with this game is play the saturn side and i'll play a tuned like a highly tuned car that i i have like the tuning on it just perfect so that it literally handles like a dream and um with automatic transmission it's very easy to place first in every race um but you know a lot of folks won't be able to mess around with that or may not have like the same access to the same settings so i just kind of wanted to show folks that it is definitely possible to play this game um on the arcade side oh and i changed my view instead of i just changed my view instead of actually downshifting so yeah <laughs> but it is i don't know it's a fun racing game Peter, you just did like a little post of it about it the other day. I was wondering, have you played this game much? Oh yeah, loads. Loads, um, okay. Yeah, like, you know, and I'll agree with most people, this is not nearly as polished as Sega Rally or even Daytona for that matter, but it's a pretty good game uh, in and of itself. You know, like the handling, once you get used to it, mm -hmm. if you really kind of zone in, I find it's sort of like wipe out really high learning curve, but when you get yeah. to that point where you're taking those corners correctly and you're driving properly, then you can re like it. The game's fast and it, it just is. becomes most of fun. It is really fast. I would say that's probably the problem. It's so fast and yet the frame rate is so low. You mix mm -hmm. those two things and you're it's like a slideshow sometimes. And um, mm -hmm. you're very right about the whole zoning in thing as a as a like a racing game guy i tend to really like racing games but i find that dang like i find that i cannot zone in when i'm comment when i'm like talking you know i'm the kind of guy who'll have my tongue out and i'll be like concentrating really hard uh but yeah no it's cool i don't i don't really care i'm not gonna try to win i'm not gonna try to like beat this on the arcade side but uh i just want to show folks that it's you know not that bad of a game so you're probably more expert at this game than I am. How many total tracks are there in the game, Dave? Uh, I believe there's four. And I mean, I think you can mirror them. So I wouldn't really count mirroring tracks another track. But I believe okay. that, yeah, there's four tracks unless uh, unless there's another one that I don't know about. There are five. I actually are thought there, there might be more. So there, there must be a, a fifth track. Like, it's been a while since I've played, I admit, but, um, you know, like, once you finish it, you get an extra track, and then there's some other conditions that have to be met, and you get a fifth track, and it plays at night time, and there's lots of tunnel sections and whatever, so um, I'd have to fire it up later today just to check it out, but I'm positive there's five tracks. Oh, yeah, you'll have to show me that. I mean, I've, I've been playing this game for a long time, and I didn't even know there were five tracks. I definitely would love to see that. Um, I also know that there were some timed world events back in the day, yes. uh, you know, that people could could go on and, and, and race in special conditions and submit their times. And I don't know if that took, you know, place over 
uh, you know, special tracks or where, where they may be the same tracks, but maybe reskinned a little bit for the events. I haven't, I, I don't know that. Although that's really neat that, again, back in 97, this is the kind of stuff that Sega was pulling with their racers. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just amazing, the whole global net event thing. Um, right, yes. the only, I, I, I imagine not so many people knew about it, though. Like, it, it's kind of crazy um, how much they would have had to... I'm going to interrupt myself just for a second. Andrew, I'm using Streamlabs OBS, yes. So is there a specific reason? Like, does the stream look wonky or something like that? Let me know. Um, but I am using Streamlabs OBS. Um, but yeah, like, imagine the campaign. Imagine what they would have had to do to get the mm-hmm. word out and let, if it was a global net event, you know, using um, the Saturn's internal clock and the time zones and everything like that. But it was cross-platform mm-hmm. too. It was... Um, it was across the the Saturn and the PC side of things because they, they released this game on PC and Saturn in like multiple territories. So the ambition behind this game was immense, even though it ended up um, kind of falling on poor reviews because of the, you know, because of the some of the technical things. I'm going to get over to the Saturn side and try to use my tune car. <laughs> now let's see here. Oh. Andrew yeah, says she likes to stream Sega Saturn too. Cool, that's awesome. Say what, Peter? I was just um, looking at the uh, little card that came with um, some copies of Sega Touring Car here in America and uh, the first event was set for Christmas 1997, December 24th specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the second Third events were set for February and April in uh, 98. And then, of course, it lists the website, the Sega Japan website, mm-hmm. to go up at your time. So uh, it's it's too bad that the barrier to entry would have been so high back then. I mean, obviously, you would have had to have a Saturn picked up this game, and you would have had to have a net link and been connected to the Internet and all that. So not as easy as it is today, obviously, but still, right. you know, it's still pretty pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go championship, and I'm going to try my my standard tuned car setup that I normally fall back on. By so, the way, I have been using your settings uh, for quite a while since you posted. I think I got them off of you. You made a post. Uh, I can't remember where anymore, but... Uh, it was before you and I even knew each other, and like those settings are amazing. They make such a difference to the game. Do they really? Oh, huge, huge. You know the. You know it's funny. Okay, so when I'm not streaming and stuff, um, like just the other day, I was messing around on the arcade side, and I was using you know sh- up shifting, down shifting, that whole th- kind of thing, and mm-hmm. I was doing just fine. I was I I got like on this qualifying round, I got like twenty four five. Or like 25 Ooh. seconds and no yeah I was, I was doing very well and up shifting and down shifting works just fine but for mm-hmm. some reason like when I'm streaming I just you know I don't do well I don't play games well when I'm streaming which is probably mm-hmm. you know probably means I should stop streaming <laughs> because people want to watch people play games well but I kind of I kind of just end up shooting the shit with whoever I'm talking to and kind of you know, just do the best that I can. But it's amazing how much focus gaming takes, you know, and how much, you know, trying to, I am not a multitasker, in other words. I'm just a very focused individual where I'm like, okay, if I'm in a game, I have to like really give it my full attention. Totally. Yeah, I don't know if you're like that. With nights, like for example, with nights, it's really hard to stream and do well on nights, you know? Absolutely. You know, for our 25th anniversary, I think it was, I streamed nights live and I was not doing really well. And you're like, I promise I'm good, guys. I promise. (laughs) Yeah, you sort of feel poorly, right? Because, you know, you 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 could do better and all that. Yeah. And I've also did that Christmas night special run where I just recorded myself and then uploaded that later. And of course, I did significantly better. Oh, you did amazing. It was a clinic. Mm. I mean, I love love watching you play nights. (laughs) 
They're it's a phenomenal at that game. And uh, man, I just, you know, I've, I've, I'm okay at it. I'm not great. I'm okay at it, but I've never been able to do the whole, get the whole PN towers or anything like that. That is amazing, you know, for folks that can do that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've ended up, I've ended up uh, hatching a key and PM just one time, and it's it's definitely special. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so I'm going to look up online right now just to see if I can find inf confirmation about all the racetracks that I was thinking. Yeah, do that. I'm I'm, I'm really interested to know. Urban. I also know that um, there is a there is the Sega Proto car. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Another thing we should talk about is AI, because AI was really important to this game. And it's another thing that exists in Knights, right? There's like a form of artificial intelligence, I guess you could say. It's very simple, but it's like based on your pl gameplay, you know, the the creatures, the Knightopians, you know, they ch their moods change and stuff, right? And the game is almost like procedural that way. Um, not truly procedural, but it's, it, it, you know, it's like the underpinnings or the the start of that whole thing and so with this game it apparently learns the ai learns from your playing and you can store an ai on your backup memory or whatever and um it'll actually, you can actually race against yourself but not a ghost not like a pre-recorded ghost but basically like an ai opponent that's based on your gameplay which is really crazy, yeah, that, that they were doing that all the way back then. Um, it reminds me of, like, it reminds me of some of these racing games where you, they've got, like, asynchronous gameplay, and you face off against other opponents, and it basically uses, you know, artificial intelligence of, like, how they race. But Sega was doing it all the way back then, and this was CSK Research Institute, CRI, that, like, did this stuff so that to me is just that's i didn't know that and that's unbelievable that's phenomenal okay so um roberto says country circuit grunwald circuit brick wall town urban circuit and then boom town circuit so the boom town yes. circuit was the other one that i was thinking that's of the one and i just yeah i can confirm that i just found that online too and if i remember correctly boom town circuit is played like i said at night time and yeah. a lot of tunnel like narrow tunnel sections well that's the urban circuit oh is it okay isn't it okay. i thought i thought that was the urban circuit um but i was cons i was oh this is oh yeah this is that one where it, like every corner sneaks up on you like yes yeah you're, you really you're got playing brick, brick town wall i think circuit right now this is my um pinball course <laughs> where i just like pinball off the walls but you know, you have to admit, so yes, I realize that the frame rate chugs a little bit, but the amount of trackside scenery is really remarkable. Oh, yeah. Like, the detail is, is, is really good. And I love the pounding Eurobeat track in the background. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. See, now, when the frame rate is so low and you're, like, into the corner in an instant, it's just, I swear, it's like a... Uh, it's like a slideshow, and that's like yeah. that's the only thing I won't forgive in this game. I feel like they could have done better, you know. But oh well. Oh well, boy. But you know what? If there is that much, um, you know, AI learning and and implementation going on, then you know, there's only so much processing power that you've got to to work with right so i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like it, it seems like they really just tried to cram absolutely everything into this game so there you go first place phil um phil fleabag he says um it's just a bit like when you play good we make it harder play bad we make it easier you play very good all the time ai goes ape shit on some races <laughs> it is it's really um it's really archaic as far as AI goes, obviously. It's just incredibly early AI, but, you know, it's still AI. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. I mean, was was uh, Sony doing that kind of stuff with the PlayStation? I don't even remember. Oh, I only have two seconds. i got to enter this right in. Okay, there we go. 
Uh, and oh, Roberto says um, Boomtown Circuit is one of the exhibition mode circuits, and he's right because um, I remember that it only comes up when I play an exhibition race, and then it's Boomtown Circuit, which I always mistake for that last one that I just raced, the Brick Town, Brick Wall Town. I always mistake it for that. Um, I so, guess I'll I mean, let it replay. Game, the game's quite full of content, really, if you compare it to Daytona or even Sega Rally. I mean, you've got five tracks, a number of cars, lots of customization, you know, the ability to upload uh, your your best times, you know, the, the AI learning, like that. You're getting really just a lot of game in there, you know? You really are. I mean, it's... And th I mean... It came out in 97, right? So Gran yeah. Turismo came out, I want to say, was it 98 or 99? Mm, uh, something tells me it was 98. 98. I know when Gran Turismo came out, that just literally busted the doors off, you know, in terms of racing games. Like, that was just so deep as far as content goes but for a game but sega you know sega would normally release these arcade racing ports that there really wasn't a whole lot to them you know i mean even with sega rally it's a very it's a very shallow game in terms of content but as far as playability and like control it, it you know gameplay is forever you know that game is has instant instant replayability because of just how good the controls are but in terms of content you know you're starving for more content with that game. This game has a lot more content in terms of being an arcade racing port. They really tried to add as much as they could to give it more value. Um, and you know, where where it uh, ultimately fails is just, you know, with that frame rate. Whereas Sega Rally, they were really able to pin it at 30 frames per second. Um, this one drops, I think, a lot of the times it drops below 20. And I mean, that's fine. 20 frames per second is playable for a lot of game genres, but not racing, <laughs> you know? And I agree, like most of Sega's uh, racing games, like Gran Turismo came in and really added an element of, um, it's almost like it added RPG-like elements to it. I mean, we... You essentially have to, you know, build your garage, get acquire different vehicles, you know, go for licenses, where you, like, you know, win, win money uh, in races and so on and so forth. And that's just not like that would never work in an arcade, right? So arcade exactly. is you want to pop in a few coins, you want to sit down for a couple of minutes and have a good time. And and so as Sega was uh, translating these games for the home, they started adding things like you know Saturn side and you know, mirrored tracks and secret vehicles and all the rest of it. But at the end of the day, you're still essentially getting a relatively shallow arcade experience, albeit one that plays, you know, exceptionally well and hopefully looks really good in the lab. But, but yeah, Gran Turismo really opened up, uh, in my opinion, a new sort of subgenre of the racing uh, mm -hmm. genre, you know. Mm -hmm. um, um, and it's... You know, my preference is still for the arcade type stuff, but uh, there's no denying that, you know, Gran Turismo especially just advanced the whole genre and took it into a, a new direction. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, um, so for those just tuning in or for those catching the tail end of this stream or whatever, um, you'll see here on the record side, and I'm not going to launch the channel web thing again but i mean they had the ability here you could press the y button and boot up a separate software that would use your netlink modem to send your scores to an online leaderboard um now zyden who runs the netlink zone with sega rpg fan joe um and he does the dream pipe server and everything like that he is working on rerouting this traffic um i don't know if he he has done it and just has, hasn't like publicly implemented it yet or if it's already been implemented. I am sorry for not knowing that as I'm saying it, but I know that he's been working on implementing that so that folks can can, can resurrect this game and be able to do online leaderboards. So um, that's awesome, you know. And then if you come out of here, you will see there's the car set up here. I'm hearing myself echo and your speaker, Peter. <laughs> oh, whoops. Okay. Yeah, you might want to turn me down on your side. I don't know. Um, 
but you can create with this right here you can tune cars which is a really cool thing you know that you could um come in here select the transmission type and then change the gear ratio the handling quick or loose soft tires hard tires uh front and rear suspension and the brakes um you can do all this stuff and that was a cool thing to have on the saturn side of this game and then i'm going to show what i was talking to you peter i don't have a second controller plugged in but it allows you to do versus race if you have ai um saved so for example here um I have an AI of myself on my backup memory cart so I can load that AI and it takes a bit of saves like it, it definitely takes uh, sorry it takes a bit of uh, quite a few blocks you know to save that AI um, which is why I recommend folks if they're gonna get into that they need to backup RAM cart um, but I can go ahead and grab my tuned uh, D2 AMG and I'll do like a three lap on the Grunwald circuit. How's that? Let's see here. Boost on. And I'm racing against the Sega Proto, I guess. And Roberto, he made a comment. He said, um, you only get the Sega Rally cars after the AI Red Proto car finished. Oh, you have to finish the championship in first place to get the Sega Rally cars. Oh, okay, that's cool. You have to play a lot with the Proto <laughs> to get there. Okay. Sorry, I was reading his comment and not watching the start of his race. Let's... That's weird. I'm not seeing my... I am not seeing my, my opponent. So, you know, you're racing, you're talking about, are you expecting to see, like, sort of like a ghost type car? Hold on. I can't hear you because I'm talking to somebody. I wanted to show you what I actually did without death mode. Okay, I'll, in a bit. Okay, I'm, I'm live right now. Okay. <laughs> My son wants to show me something that he is doing on another game. Um, I'm not seeing the proto, though. I'm not seeing my AI here, actually. That's weird. Okay, maybe I need to get out to the top menu again. Um, something really strange was the other day I did a playback of the AI. I did, uh, let's see here. It was a, it was a time attack. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was a time attack and I used the proto car and I put it on, I put it on a, Let me see if I can, let me see if I can get it again so I can show you. Uh, it's not there. Hold on a second. I, maybe it's on exhibition. It's just something weird I want to show you if you, if you have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Roberto says, you don't see him because the AI car is too slow. He's probably rolling at 20. Yeah. Okay. Roberto, explain that to me because that's exactly the case. If you go to exhibition here, um, if you go to exhibition here, and you press the X button. I am pressing the okay. And you get the you get the proto car, right? You stick it on AI and then you select. The AI is gonna drive the car. But the weird thing is as we're watching it, you'll see it's gonna drive like 30 miles an hour and it's gonna totally lose every race. Um and perhaps Roberto in the comments can um speak to why that is. Because I don't actually Maybe it's in the manual and I haven't read it, but you'll see there it's flashing AI right now is driving the car. Um, okay, so like he's he's dropping speed like, okay, actually he's doing a lot better than he was the other day. A lot better. <laughs> the other day he was driving like 30 miles an hour, but now, okay, now he's getting lazy. He's like, okay, I'm going to drive like 80. It's a cool, it's like. It's a cool playback, but I don't understand why he's sucking so bad. And I'll, the only thing I can imagine is that it has something to do with um, has something to do with the AI not having been learned yet. I don't know. 
Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's totally possible. But I mean, I've had the save on my. I've had the save for a while, so I don't know. You can see the CRI logo there, on the tail, on the, uh, on the spoiler. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 CRI logo on the spoiler, and if folks don't know, CRI, um, they became a part of AM2, and then they also developed the uh, video compression, you know, for CRI, CRI middleware, CRI mm -hmm. soft deck. ADX for the Dreamcast, that kind of stuff. So same, same research institute that Sega had from like the early '80s, um, behind a lot of their technological stuff. Okay, so Roberto says the more you drive the the proto, okay, the more you drive it, the faster the AI gets. Got it. Okay, and I have not put in any time on the proto. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I haven't really put it put in much time on the proto. So, let's do that. Let's uh, race an exhibition race with the proto. Let's see how that goes. Again, I am learning new things about this <laughs> game after all this time. It's crazy. Um, I'm gonna go manual transmission because without this thing tuned. I have no idea how automatic transmission is going to work. So question, do you, when you play Sega touring card, do you use your retail copy or do you use your production so, silver? I use my retail copy. The production <laughs> silver is just kind of tucked away in the same, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's tucked away in the same, com uh, disc, uh, you know, in the same case, case yeah. same yeah. case, yeah. right. Um, it drives okay. It's not, uh, it's no AMG. I really like the AMG for some reason. I just always have the best luck with the Mercedes. And the Alfa Romeo is not bad, but I haven't figured out the right tuning for it. I can't apply my same tuning settings to the Alfa Romeo and get the exact same results. I need, uh, I need to tweak those tuning settings. But, um, this, this drives, you know, pretty good with standard uh, standard manual transmission but I'm not gonna win any races either because uh, obviously you have to take time to get good <laughs> which is the case with any racing game oh that's weird the audio cut out for a second And uh, Andrew, no, I'm not on Twitch. I think I think I have to pay. I would have to pay for a Prime account with the. Um, well, that's not the reason why. I'm I normally stream on Facebook because this is where my audience is. Um, with Sega Saturn Shiro or Saturn Dave, it's gonna mostly be on Facebook. I've been trying to stream on YouTube, but that's just not where my audience is. So I find that I get more engagement here. And then, you know, I record on the side so that, you know, I can share it out later. And I'm not going to get the E in there. Oh, there we go. You know, I've got a Saturn keyboard on the way, and it would sure make things like this so much easier, wouldn't it? Except I think that the, um, yes to your question in general, but I think that the manual, I think I read that the Saturn keyboard is not compatible. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's not. I'm, I'm, Isn't that I'm funny? Sure it isn't. Yeah. Being yeah. a game that works with the Netlink and everything, that it wouldn't, you know, it's just, it's so backward. Like they were so ahead, but then on some things they were so backwards. <laughs> oh, well. Definitely. Yeah, so <laughs> when we just raced there, that was the Boomtown track that Roberto was talking about, so and let me think time attack standard time attack mode is how you get good that's that's how and you can literally set it up here i'll go with my tuned car and then like grunwald circuit is probably my favorite you can do free run you can do five laps if you do free say five laps uh, hold on a second. 
Are you, are you waking up, Jeannie, yet? No, of course. It's right there. You, you're gonna... Oh, you're fine. It's a, it's a close shot. All right, so let's see here. Oh. Sounds like he's saying something that he's not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't actually know what he's saying, but it definitely doesn't sound good. It sounds like an expletive. Uh, okay, my shifters are not working. Oh, okay, there we go. You typically play manual. I'm sorry. Do you usually play manual transmission or? I. Well, okay, so just a second ago I was, uh, I said my shifters weren't working. That's because I'm on automatic transmission <laughs> and I forgot. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I do both. You know, I, I play both and I enjoy playing both. Like, um, but of course, when you try to control an automatic transmission car manually, it's not going to work. Uh, yeah. and that's what I was experiencing yeah. right there. But no, this, this car is the magic tuning car, you know, that I shared with you. And I mean, yeah. it just controls so easily. I would say that it makes, you know, like instead of downshifting, I find that I just kind of let off the gas a little bit and then power in through the corner. And um, it works just as good as if you were manual transmission and you were like slapping the shifter down. Um, mm -hmm. I hardly ever use the brakes, I will say that. You'll never, you'll almost never see my brake lights come on <laughs> because I hardly mm -hmm. ever use the brakes. Mm -hmm. Even on a corner like that, I just kind of, let off the gas and turn sharply and the car drifts a little bit and then I just power right through the turn <laughs> yeah and um, you know somebody oh and I'm not I was looking at the comments so I kind of went off the road there but um, somebody asked if I was using the steering wheel and I have to admit uh, the steering wheel was a late acquisition for me I, I never had one back in the day. I always kind of wondered about it, but it was one of those space things where I was just like, I don't really have anywhere to put it or mount it. And um, I find them kind of cumbersome if you can't have them like properly mounted. Um, so I never used one. And then like last year I picked one up and I was not impressed. <laughs> it's just like most games that I knew like the back of my hand, it didn't improve them, it actually made them worse, you know, like Daytona. I was like, I can see, I can see how somebody with no preconceptions, no knowledge of how to control that game with the pad came in and could be good with the, with the steering wheel. But like for me, it was just, it threw me back to being like a child at these games, you know? Yeah, they're two different, aren't they? Like the two, because I, I actually used to have a steering wheel, and I found that I often uh, uh, reverted back to just using a control. Even the three D pad is is good, but the steering wheel itself, I was never really overly fond of. Yeah, you know, um, the one game that I will endorse for the steering wheel, and I mean, it it controls like a dream, and actually makes the game that much more fun is. Um, what is that go-kart racing game that like German or European developed formula carts, formula carts, formula carts plays amazing with the steering wheel. Um, That's fascinating. I'm going to have to try that. And I'm, I would even go so far as to say that, um, what is it? Uh, virtual racing with the go-karts. And I, it got me on to, it got me on to something that when you're driving a really small vehicle that's very close to the ground and has that really kind of like short tight handling the steering wheel actually works really well in cockpit mode it has to be in cockpit mode but um, right, it has right. an almost one-to-one -one kind of feel and it works really really well but with any kind of like traditional saloon type cars or you know uh four-door sedan uh or like uh Formula One cars or anything like that. I just don't like the steering wheel. I don't find that I like it, but um, mm -hmm. it really works good as a go kart uh, racing steering wheel. So I do recommend that if anybody has like, um, you know, can, if anybody's like put it in the closet and just like forgotten about it, try it with Formula Karts. You will not be uh, disappointed. I think that it works great. 
Interesting. And Rhett Miller says the lyric is, are you stuck in a window pane? Which I do remember reading that in a forum or something like that. But um, it sounds like he's saying, are you effing awake up there? Or are you effing awake out there? Um, that's what it sounds like. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I've been playing this game forever, and that's what it sounds like. You know, I remember when I was testing uh, all of the North American games for compatibility with the floppy drive, I was really hoping that uh, Touring Car would be compatible because, you know, especially with the AI files, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a lot of memory blocks that it consumes, but alas, I was not able to get it to work. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I mean, that would have been another game that would have been just phenomenal for, you know, two-player uh, LAN cable mode. But again, um, although I have not, you know, done any tests, I don't, I'm, I'm positive that it is not, not compatible with that. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sad that there, that things were a little more streamlined across the board and that you could, mm -hmm. uh, but that's the thing is, is this was like early days for everything. So there was no expectation. Yeah. I think it's like, we're all upset in hindsight. <laughs> we're, we're all shrugging and being like, oh man, why couldn't you guys? But you know, at the time, yes. at the time, half of the coder, half the programmers were probably like, should I even bother spending an entire work day? Um, coding in mouse support for something when like nobody's probably gonna have a mouse or when they're or coding in you know a certain type of support for some you know some really esoteric peripheral that nobody's probably gonna have so I don't know the ones the coders that like needed a challenge and they probably worked fast and, and got got the rest of the stuff done early were just looking for something to do they probably added it in you know but anyway <laughs> It's interesting too, just the um, the history behind this event that this is based on. It's like the DTM. Uh, it's like it's like a racing event that really didn't even uh, last that long, if I'm correct. Yeah, it was a it was a European racing event that um, used, I guess, souped up uh, production line cars. You know, like high end. Alfa Romeo, uh, Mercedes. Um, there wasn't there wasn't actually any Japanese cars in it because it was a European event. So, I um, the the fact that they added in you know like the um, the fact that they added in the Toyota in there is kind of just you know I guess a nod at um, trying to include uh, one of the Sega Rally cars in there you know because it's recognizable and people like it. But it wasn't in the original event. So yeah. Have you ever even seen this game in the arcades? I don't think it it may not have had a very wide distribution. Oh, okay. Did I see this in the arcade? Mm -hmm. Uh not prominently. Not like you would have seen Daytona. Like Daytona was like McDonald's, everybody saw it. It was everywhere. It, it, in in every arcade, you know, but I would say that with this it was like a uh I don't know, maybe like a red lobster. <laughs> <laughs> I can't it was rare to see it and I think maybe once I saw it in a really big arcade that was you know had several different racing uh, setups um, but it's not it's one that I've really only played the arcade um, you know subsequently uh, via emulation which is sad I wish I I wish I had played the original game you know but uh Rhett says, I'm late here, but learning you could upload scores using Netlink blew my mind. That would have been a lot of fun to experience back in the day, since I remember Sonic Adventure and the community there was uploading world ranking times and runs. And it's true, with the software that comes um, with the software that comes with this game, like buried in here, the CRI uh, channel web, you also can send emails using your Saturn. So even before you had like the Netlink browser or other stuff, you could set up an email account and send, send emails through this thing. So it's just crazy. I think Zyden is going to work on, um, reviving that as well, you know? So, you know, the more time that goes by, the more, um, all of these old technologies are rising from their graves, <laughs> so to speak. 
I really have to get myself a VoIP adapter. I've got both a US Netlink and also a Japanese X band modem. Right. And it really, I just, I mean, if for nothing else, then the ability to set up, uh, you know, local. Oh yeah. Head to head play for the for the Japanese games like, like uh, Virtua Fighter Remix or even you know, um, uh, uh, Decathlete or any of the other ones that, that oh, yeah. didn't come out oh, here for head to head. Like I think that would be super cool. Yeah. Um, you would. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I am. I am. Um. I'm wrapping this up, but um, another thought uh, based on what you just said, definitely you need to get a VoIP adapter. You need to do that before um, everybody goes and tries to get one, you know, and I don't know, there, there may be another solution down the road. Um, they're working on a tunneling solution that would use like a standard PC. You know, if you got a standard, uh, you know, an old mm -hmm. PC lying around that has a LAN connection, good LAN connection. They're working on a tunneling uh, version and it's, who knows how far down the road, you know, so now the VoIP adapter is what works and everybody's using it. And the fact that, um, the, the patch that Joe put out, um, made everything run so much better, um, using, mm -hmm. using the Japanese, uh, 14, uh, uh, baud rate. The mm -hmm. fact that it works so good now m means there's less of an impetus to get that tunneling thing running you know because it it works really well but i think that more people are going to have a pc lying around that they can use that tunneling software over getting all this stuff you know with the with the voip adapter but what you should do is um if you can you know get a voip adapter that'd be great for head-to-head -head stuff but if you're going to do any of this stuff where you're uploading times or you're um, sending emails game saves for uh for instance if you want to send uh, saturn game saves over email to a friend or something you can do that but you need a dream pie for that um uh, yeah and that's another thing the fact that you need a different set of a uh, different piece of hardware to do internet related things and then a different piece of hardware to do head-to-head -head matchup stuff i think that that's kind of a discouraging factor to a lot of people but sure the uh the voip adapter can be had you know for like 20 bucks on ebay um i find you can get them out of virginia um, there's a lot of tech companies in virginia and a lot of those companies used those voip adapters the, um so if you find listings on ebay out of virginia they're probably legit um because i've heard that you need to watch out for like uh you need to watch out for uh what am, what am I thinking? Um, fake, fake units or fake adapters, you know, <laughs> knockoff adapters or whatever. Because I guess there were actually like Chinese knockoff versions of these Linksys adapters. But if you buy it out of Virginia, I think you're pretty safe. But uh, anyway, um, before I wrap this, before, you know, we wrap this up and um, I log off here, I want to read uh, Roberto's comment. He says, the Supra is the only black sheep of the car lot because the Mercedes, Alfa Romeo, and the Opal were racing at the time on the DTM. The Supra is from the Japanese GT Championship, and it was never raced on DTM. Yeah, that, that's true. So it's kind of, you know, just like Sega throwing it in there because it was a very popular car at the time, and, you know, people want to race a Supra. Um, did you want to say something to everybody? My son's here just chomping at the bit to get me over to another game that he's playing because he wants to show me some cool thing that he did. What did you do? You want to show me. You don't want to tell me. Okay. All right. Well, guys, thank you, everyone, for tuning in, commenting. Peter, thanks for um, for joining me. Uh, I didn't really announce it. It was very impromptu, as it always is. But uh, I thank you. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been fun. You still there, Peter? You bet, yeah. Yeah, he's there. Okay. <laughs> Well, I can I'll always jump on. It's always fun. I appreciate that. I do. I'm sorry for not being able to give you more notice, but it worked out and I'm glad. Um, yeah. And thank you guys for joining in the comments. And uh, until next time, Saturn Dave reminding you guys to play your Sega Saturns and go check out the Sega Saturn Shiro podcast. The latest episode we did was um, a Halloween kind of like bad games. That was a lot of fun to do. And we have another episode that coming up soon that we're going to be recording. So um, until next time, guys. Sound and Dave signing out.